But the way Marty holds it, it's just hold this shot. wide shot, and and he just waits for me to crawl there. It took forever, though, that shot. The use just... of a medium frame as opposed to a close-up on that. Uh, using the wider frame is better in a comedy. You know, it's the old Howard Hawks thing. This is Jordan Belfort, and he is at the lowest point of the movie, quite literally. And this is also Jordan Belfort. Also known as the Wolf of Wall Street, which is a nickname I earned back in the day when I built Although, I'd like to know anybody who can tell me that anyone ever called him that. And you know why that is? He is a professional liar, and that's how they show him in the movie. You flew in here at three in the morning on that stupid helicopter and woke up Skylar. That was you Skylar, all about that. A Does he even bullshit. That's why even the editing contradicts him. He is not a reliable no, no, narrator. No, 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 that's the truth. But I want to tell you this. Yeah. What was so refreshing about him was the fact that, look, he knew he made a lot of mistakes. This was a very dark period in his life, so he was incredibly candid and in always forthright and always honest. All that insight, and especially a lot of the sales stuff. I mean, he took me through beat by beat, the lowering of the voice, you know, how you manipulate somebody. You money. Sound fair enough? There are certain tones that we use now in human communication in matters of influence. There are 10 that we use again and again and again. go a heck of a lot higher than that. Your profit on a mere $6,000 investment would be upwards of $60,000. Jesus, that's my mortgage, man. Exactly, you could pay off your mortgage. That's doing the talking. After the movie, he has started to give many more conferences. And today I'm interested in talking about him, or well. Not him, me. That's right. Maybe what this ex-partner is saying holds truth because what this guy, what this guy have in common is that they are both masters of persuasion. Jordan Selling. It's because this man. Martin making movies. Is a creative genius. Both are language geniuses in their own way. Sell me this pen. I have one question and I'm a huge fan of your film. Can you please sell me this pen? <laughs> so let me, let me tell you what that whole exercise really stands for, right? So, But if they are such geniuses, how is it possible that there are so many people misinterpreting the movie? Next question. And if you don't get it, when that girl's head is being shaved in the middle of the brokers having an orgy at the end of their month celebration, mm -hmm. that is saying something very powerful. This is monstrous. And if the audience doesn't get that, I don't know what to say. I mean, that is very much of a judgment, but you have to make that judgment. This is something that always catches my eye, because despite Belford addressing us in the first person, the movie distinctly aims to establish some distance from the characters, with meticulously arranged and artificial distance shots. How'd you fucking do that? Like this one, where characters are positioned akin to a still life. Oh, I gotta tell you, this contrasts sharply, for example, with Uncut Gems, when I tell you. a film that explores similar themes, but employs disorderly camera compositions and chaotic movements to achieve a documentary-like feel. Scorsese doesn't even seek so many close-ups. Okay, don't try to fight it. That's why Scorsese shot it in medium shots, not close-ups, and that's something students need to learn. Everything doesn't have to be a close-up. Uh, you have to know how to use the medium properly. Like a twinkle, you have like a twinkle. Did you try and kiss me, bro? Jesus. Oh, did you try and kiss me? In Raging Bull, another of his films, the camera alternates between two styles. On one hand, subjective impressions delving into the character's psyche, and on the other, capturing everyday life situations with a more haphazard style. However, the most striking example of this is how scenes where action takes center stage are filmed. Nicholas, you know, they got crazy. In Raging Bull, the action is at times impressionistic, at others, quite homely. In Gangs of New York, it's more artificial and stylized. Still bloody, but artificial. In Casino, it's raw, and even though it's exaggerated, there's a certain naturalism that's unsettling. With a camera that captures the moment as if it were truly happening, there's no staging, no theatricality, just these guys among vegetation and dirt. And lastly, there's The Wolf of Wall Street, where the violence is... What did you do? Well, stupidly clumsy. 
and something similar happens with the scene where Jordan crawls on the floor. The key word to understand it is distance, which is crucial to the entire movie. Kind of like a 2001 Space Odyssey thing. I was this primordial beast crawling yeah. towards Get this to futuristic space yeah. machine. Yeah. But the way Marty holds it, it's just it's this shot. wide shot. Perhaps another director might have chosen a different approach to put us in Belfer's perspective. Either through camera manipulation, like in Enter the Void, or through sound simulating the effects of drugs, like in Midsummer, and so on. Because you know cinema and drugs always go hand in hand. In any case, they would seek to give us a subjective impression of the events. Not this. I'm a great believer in what Charlie Chaplin said, is that a life is a tragedy in close-up and a comedy in long shot. If you sit back visually on a situation, it automatically becomes funnier. Your daughter's in the house! I hope you know that! Your daughter's in the house! The actors told me, on this film particularly, that hearing him laugh during the take was such a great thing for them. Honestly, my indication from, from Marty that the scene was going well is when I could hear him laughing from behind the monitors. Who's Venice? Huh? Who? 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 Comedy is built on wide shots, and I'm not sure if the distance is a means to reach that comedy, or if comedy is actually a natural consequence of that distance. Donnie and I were in investing in a condominium complex in Venice. That's why, that's why all this can... But for me, distance is the solution to a problem. Because much of the movie is based on Belfort's book. But how do you trust the book of someone whose main tool is persuasion? Isn't the book a giant persuasion? Well, I was, I was fascinated then by the possibility of a person who has that, um, has the, uh, um, the uh, talent of persuasion. I think Scorsese was keenly aware of this aspect. Maybe we built up a tolerance after all these years, huh? If you read the book, you'll notice a significantly different approach it's an autobiography, intimate, told like a drama, and more self-critical. He even warns us with passages, like this one, for example, to any person who's considering taking a God-given gift and misusing it, to anyone who decides to go to the dark side of the forest and live a life of unbridled hedonism, and to anyone who thinks there's anything glamorous about being known as a wolf of Wall Street. In the movie, we don't have this. Why? Why? Because it's a movie, and its job is not to educate. Furthermore, Scorsese wouldn't be so cynical as to put himself in that position. But it does have a very interesting gesture. Just in case it's not clear to you that Jordan was a despicable person, there's a voice at the end that says this. My good friend Mr. Jordan Belfort is the single baddest motherfucker I have ever met. It's the only explicit statement in the movie as a judgment against him. And do you know who it's given by? To give a warm Auckland, New Zealand welcome for my good friend and the world's greatest sales trainer, Mr. Jordan Belfort! By Belfort himself. There's something symbolic in him saying it, rather than DiCaprio. It's not just a cameo, it's as if Belfort himself were signing the movie. <laughs> approving the portrayal that the movie makes of him. You know, I find the conclusion of the movie to be prophetic in the way Scorsese portrays it. As soon as one of those conferences begins, the audience regards him with eyes shining. Sell me this pen almost as if he were a messiah, even after being dubbed the baddest guy in the world by the baddest guy in the world. <laughs>